Hello everybody and welcome back to the show. I am the host, Jay, and I hope you're all having a wonderful time. For me, I've kind of been looking forward to this uh, week because, as you all know, what's being dropped is Forbidden Power. So, I've waited a couple of days and we've got a bit more information that we could talk about. So, I thought, what better chance than any? Let's do a quick video and um, see what you guys think. So, um, GW have said that they're releasing the modular train and the expansion set. So, we're going to talk about the expansion set because it's not a lot we can say about the modular train that I haven't said already when we more talked about um, the Far Cry and, uh, what not Far Cry, War Cry and Forbidden Power, mixing the two together then. But um, I kind of like the train. I'm, I'm going to hold off for now, hope picking it up because I'm going to go for this box. So, what's coming in the Forbidden Power expansion box? Well, let's uh, jump into it and we can have a look. Right then, guys, within the box itself, there's going to be core rules, there's going to be the campaign expansion. There's also going to be three new Ender Spells and a, a well, brand new piece of scenery. That's And all these are going to be um, for all armies. It's not going to be any, for one specific army. It's for all of them. It just so happens this expansion starts with the realm magic of Shaish. That's why it's a, it looks like Nagash's mini black pyramid. There's a bone bridge and a floating face. So, after that we've got war scrolls for these guys. And we've got the core rules and we've got the campaign book. And I think I might have said that twice already. Anyway, so within the campaign book, as we found out the other day, they are going to be doing a mercenary system. So there's going to be certain armies that you can pull out, pull on to add to your army. So I'm guessing for order and destruction, you're going to have fire slayers. Death is probably going to have the flesh eater courts and chaos is just probably going to be chaos it's you don't you you fortify chaos with more chaos you don't drag anything else into it but from the information dropped on the week uh, over this last week we've noted that we've seen that there's also a new battle realm called sticks which is going to have its own command abilities special rules and magic so that's going to be included in the book so you get in an extra realm and you know extra abilities you get a mercenary kit a mercenary uh, expansion seems all going to be worth it at the moment but also there's going to be a new army well new army per se it's going to be called the Legion of Grief, which is going to be a mixture of um, Legion of Nagash and the Ninth Haunt. So that's going to bring in a new mechanic, and it's going to be, even though it's a mixture of, de of you know, the Grand Lion's Death, it's going to have its own mechanic, so it's going to be a very unique unique uh, feel and if I look at it right there's going to be a older one which is a mixture of Stormcast Eternals, Aideneth Deepkin and o uh, Hadron Overlords which is called the Defender's Army 
So again, that's going to have its own traits, its own abilities, and it's going to have its own feel. So the expansion, just by what I've said already, sounds like it's going to have more than its money worth already. So you've had four endless spells. You've got scenery. You've got two new armies in the booklet, and you've got mercenaries as well as other forbidden power expansions for other realms. So I'm really excited for this book. It seems it seems like it's going to be a bit of a game changer. So what do you guys think? Are you excited about this, or are you not bothered? And I'm just like you know talking up my ass basically but I think this is going to be fantastic and AOS at the moment is on fire with the setting so this can only mean it's getting better right then guys also we've had uh, the end the spell wall scrolls dropped today on the community ch on the community channel it's I know I kind of like them even though they death they death themed and that doesn't mean that this is going to be just the shy spells. It's you've got these, and it's going to show that um, since the the necro quick, since the beginning of soul wars and the malign sorcery stuff, just the whole realms have gone batshit. So it doesn't matter if it's a um, winds of death spell or if it's a winds of fire spell it's just gonna just be amazing whatever happens like granted you're gonna have bonuses to being in certain uh, realms but you know we have that anyway so it's nothing new so let's get into it and let's see what you guys think about it right then guys we've got the first end of the spell now which I think is probably the best looking and it's the soul seeker i'm not even going to try and pronounce the uh, the first name is is it lotion lotion not lotion lotion well anyway he's a soul seeker and means as we've got a realm called sticks and now you've got this guy it's just so dan dante's inferno it hurts I absolutely love it. It is, you know, an amazing model that just conjures up everything that you you would read about in, uh, you know, your English literature classes. So, other than that, let's get into it. So we've got um, the description is it's a predatory spell and it can move up to uh, twelve inches. You have got summon it, summon it on a casting value of six and it's going to be set up wholly within 12 inches of the caster so you know it's kind of close but it's got a very good ability which is uh, um, empowered by Shaish uh, if this battle is taken in the realm of death you can move up to 18 inches not 12 so you've got that extra buff because it's a death well winds of death the spell in the realm of death so I like that you've also got the navigate the deathly tides when this model is set up the player who set up can immediately make a move same as every end of spell and then we've got soul price before a player makes a move with this model that player can pick a friendly unit wholly within three inches of this model remove that unit and place it to one side after this model has moved Set that unit up again, wholly within three inches of the the model, and more than nine inches away from your enemy units, uh, which is bog standard spacing. Uh, once this unit has been set up, one model from that unit immediately slain. So that's my tea rattling. It's you can ferry a slow unit. Say you've got a unit that's not moving more than six inches, you can move them twelve inches. Or if you're like you know Shaish, you're uh, moving eighteen inches. So you you know, like 
tripling their speed on some armies or um, doubling their speed but there's no um, model limit it's so it, do, I, it doesn't even say like if it's going to be a um, is excluding certain types of units so I don't see why you can't like move you know um, you slow movers like your Bulgrins or something like that or yeah, Dragon Ogres you can just move them yeah granted you've got to lose any A model so but that is the price you I am willing to take to get that unit that hard hitting unit at the board so yeah I kind of like this model and like I said I, I'm a corn army so you know we won't be using uh, you know endless spells but it's just a lovely expansion to uh, get a hold of and I've also got my death army that I'm going to try and finish so this will be perfect and I will use this every day of the week once I've got that death army sorted right then guys we've got the soul scream bridge or as I refer to it as the soul scream stargate um, it's a very lovely looking uh, set of models because it looks like your army's marching all of a sudden like giant spine it's, it's fantastic it's it's very realms of death feel so it's pff, I love it so back to the point it's not a predatory spell it's got a casting value of six and you've got to set the first part of the bridge up within six inches of your caster and then the next the next part's going to be within 12 inches of the first so it's a safer way of moving 18 inches really and it's but it's from a set from a set spot so I don't know I kind of like the fact that the soul seeker even though he is using one of your models even if you like further down the board he can uh, he can like close the gap it's so he's a, to me it's prob it's probably better late game than this bridge but I'm probably wrong and if I am please let me know so uh, the abilities now um, empowered by Shaish uh, the second the second part of the bridge can be set up 24 inches from the first part of the bridge instead of 12 so you're effectively doubling your range if you're playing in Shaish which is always nice Nightmare Construct subtract one from the bravery characteristics of the enemy unit while they are within six inches of the bridge so it's you know it's not only is it effective getting your army up if there's a battle going on around it it can also help get the enemy out the way but thankfully if you're playing legions in the gash or night taunts it doesn't affect your armies because it doesn't affect death units which is always a plus when you've got a big massive scary spine bridge and next we got deathly passage and the deathly passage rule is at the start of your movement phase friendly units wholly within six inches of the soul scene bridge model uh, can travel across across the end of the spell if they do so remove that unit and set it up within six inches of the other part of the bridge can't be any closer than nine inches from any enemy unit and the unit cannot move as normal afterwards so if you're starting off within six inches you're not moving you're not moving an extra six inches the other side you're just on one side off the other so uh, that's, that's just the way it is and no offense you have moved a total of 18 inches instead of your your normal move so to me it's a good trade it's a safer way of moving around than the solar seeker but it's the it's the placement makes it a little bit weird and 18 inches is i don't know i don't think it's the be all and end all if it was 
24 inches anyway I think that would make it probably better or even if it was just 18 inches then I would think about taking it over the Soul Seeker but at the moment I think Soul Seeker is better even though you're paying the price for it but like I said I go by rule of cool I don't I don't uh, play you know the best list rule of cool always wins for me right uh, we're going on to the next one now which is called the horror ghast which um, law wise sounds actually a little bit more fun because even though it looks like a massive Nagash head it's not actually Nagash's head it's predatory spirits that takes the form of the most feared thing that army can f that that army can fake think of and what I like is how they've written is nine times out of ten gazing at Nagash is the thing that makes any army shit their pants so that's why it's taken that form so I think it's, it's a nice little fluffy way of saying Nagash is going to be the big scary at the moment because it's soul wars so anyhow enough of my rambling let's get into the end of the spell which as we know it's a predatory spell as as per the law uh, and it can move nine inches and it's classed as a flyer um, you summon it on a six and it's got to be set up wholly within 12 inches of the caster um, as per all the, all the other um, scrolls it's in powered by Shaiish which means um, it uh, it can move up to 12 inches instead of 9 so you know it, you know empowered by Shaiish is a good buff because these are even though they're for everyone like I've said they are winds of death spells I know I'm going old school with uh, winds of death because they don't really talk like that anymore but that's the easiest way I can I can explain it um, and the ability is prey on fear so subtract one from the bravery ca um, characteristics of the unit wholly within 12 inches of this model so subtract two st from the bravery characteristics if they are within six so it's a bravery debuff while the other two were movement based this is whittling this is whittling down the other uh, army after battle shock so i don't know he's he's got his he's got his position but i don't know whether i'm gonna i would see this a lot because i, th I think a lot of people are, are planning to take off units rather than leave one or two and then the battle shock is take it out in battle so it's a fun little spell it's like i said it's got its place it's got good law and you know i might be wrong it might be a, it might be a f like few players that are into the debuffs if they if uh, if you are please tell me down below if i'm wrong about uh, this just being a fun spell or whether this is going to be probably used more than the others because if you guys don't tell me I don't learn myself and by doing this channel I, I pick up little bits and bobs from you guys as well so I may be reading out the war score but you can you can give me some extra tips so yeah I can't wait to hear what you guys say about this right then guys last but not least we've got the shards which are within little black pyramids it's a very interesting war scroll it's i don't know what to make of it i think i think this is going to be used probably as much as the soul bridge but i could be wrong but let's have a look at it and then you guys can tell me what you think so it's two models that count as one spell 
it, it's got a casting value of five and the first shard gets set, set up wholly within six inches of the caster and then the next shard gets set up within 12 inches of the first one um, if he's battling in Shaiish so we may as well get the uh, empowered by Shaiish spell it uh, can be set up 12 inches away from the caster rather than 6 so you know it's going to be easy to get off but hard to use I think because you know it's, it's going to be used a certain way so let's get into the movement part which is called the twilight translocation at the start of the battle round after ter terminating who has the first uh, first turn players must roll off the winner can remove one shard from the endless spell on the battlefield and then set it up anywhere in the battlefield 12 inches away from the next shard so it's like it's constantly spinning around each other and then because they are doing this ballet around each other it makes it a little bit harder to move so it's gonna it's, if um, your opponent is clever enough I should say he can move it so it's out the way so it takes more than just like two turns to get back into the game or if he, if you do this late in the game he can just dump it straight over you guys but we don't want that because of its ability ensnaring soul drain at the start of the movement phase draw an imaginary line between uh, the closest parts of the two shards each unit passed across by this line is ensnared until the end of that turn have the movement characteristics of our unit um, in addition to subtract one from its hit rolls and the attacks made so it's a proper little movement trap it's going to sl slow down cavalry units and that's probably the best way to use this would be if you know you're going to get hit hard like say corn units like the skull crushers they come in and they got a cracking charge move uh, cracking charge move and the ability to like do a lot of damage so if you don't want them to hit like a truck you can chuck this out and you stop that big movement and the big hit so it's again it's situational but I can see this having more use than the last the endless spell and probably be on the board more than the soul seeker because you don't pay any type of uh, fine uh, fine on this one like the soul price so I don't know do you like any of these spells guys are they worth it for you or are you not interested in this expansion it's because so far it just doesn't seem anything higher than meh let me know down below and that's it guys thank you for struggling through this with me i know i've been a bit bunged up and a bit of a uh, you know it's to do with a bit of hay fever but you know I probably sound like I'm rambling more but you know I just wanted to get this out here so you know we can have a chat about this and I hope you guys are excited about the Forbidden Power expansion coming so soon I know we've had a bit of a delay now because Silver Death has been pushed back and there's some gorgeous looking models in that, in that uh, release if you haven't seen it please go look at the previous videos where we covered it and yeah let me know if you guys are excited about about this um are the end of spells worth it are you waiting to find out what the scenery piece does and yeah just like i said let me know what your thoughts are down below because this is a community channel for the community by the community and you know it's you guys responding gives me you know content to build on because we can have further discussions about this but you know that's up to you guys um please like comment and subscribe if you're not a subscriber if you are a subscriber please share this amongst your friends and sadly i've got to shill a bit now 
the channel has got a PayPal account, so that's in the link down below. And we've got a Teespring account as well. So um, if you head on over to Teespring, type in Noob with Brush, we uh, you can set you up with some hoodies, t-shirts, and then all other uh, apparel. Well, there's also no Blood Bowl video up this week, and the league has ended. So we're going to be setting up ready now for the main league coming up in September, probably the latter half of September, but we'll put more content up then. So if you are here for the Blood Bowl, please bear with us, because um, there will be more in the future. But I've rambled on long enough, I'm going to let you guys get on with the rest of your day and all night. And I hope to see you again in the next video. So until then, thanks for listening.